Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira. Today we're going to be working with a little bit different of a material. I'm going to be using juice boxes to make two things. The first is going to be a little dog house to go with our cardboard house and we'll make an inhabitant for the dog house later on. And I'm also going to be making a sink. I will put timestamps in the description box below if you're only interested in one of those, but let's get started. I have found quite a few of these in my recycle bin recently, and so I kept looking at them thinking, what can I make with these? And obviously my first thought was a little miniature house because they're just that shape. So I really wanted to do a dog house from the beginning, but I also wanted to try and push myself a little bit to see what else I can create. So I'm going to be starting this video by making the sink, which is probably the last thing I thought of making. Uh, to begin, I kind of smashed the top of the juice box down because I want a more boxy shape. I don't want it to be house shaped. And now I'm just using a, my exacto uh, knife and very dangerously cutting towards my hand. The uh, center seam there was hard to cut through and then once I got past that it cut really quickly through the thin material. I'm making an opening here because I want to use some fabric in there later. Now I do want to make a point to say that it's very important if you do use food containers that you clean them out thoroughly. You saw there was still some moisture from where I rinsed it out. Uh, just make sure you get any food particles off of these materials before you use them. Now I did notice that the juice box was very weak. The walls are very bendable and so I did decide to use some popsicle sticks in the building of this piece to give it a little bit more strength. On its own it's very easy to smash and just deform. So what I'm going to do is use the popsicle sticks to create the legs of the sink. I'm using my easy cutter tool to cut off the ends that has the rounded bit and then cut it to the right size so that the top of my sink ledge will be at the right height for Miss Periwinkle who lives in this house. I'm also using a jelly container that I had from my previous potbelly stove video. They make really, really great sinks. They're already formed in the correct shape. All I did was cut out a hole in the top of the juice box and I'm just gonna add some glue and then push the sink into place. Now I do wanna say, I don't think crafting with juice boxes is the best idea. It is, like I said, a very flimsy material. I had to do quite a bit to make it strong enough to stand on its own as a sink or a piece of furniture. So I would say going forward, if you wanted to make this, here you can see me pushing on the material. It's just, it's not even, the, the, the uh, cardboard that they use to make it with is just, not the greatest. So if you did want to make this sink, I do suggest possibly finding some other small box that has a little bit more strength to it. I ended up putting popsicle sticks all the way around, just trying to strengthen it as much as I could. I also put one on the bottom here so that I didn't have the bottom drooping if I did later on want to put something underneath the sink. So while I am trying to experiment and go out of my comfort zone here, sometimes I find that some materials just aren't the best materials for the job. Because this is going to be a sink and I want it to be kind of an old fashioned sink, I did look up some references, but because this is going into a fairy tale house, I just kind of went with the flow, what I decided to do. And um, I put a little board on the back of the sink so I have something to attach the faucet head to. And before I move on to uh, doing anything else, I want to sand all of the popsicle sticks and of course the body of the juice box as well because it has a waxy finish. I'm now going to use some all-purpose joint compound which is something that I have been using since the very beginning of this project on both the house itself and the furniture inside the house. This is the first step to kind of fill in any cracks or crevices that are not wanted and I'm using this especially up around where the legs meet the top part of the juice box. I'm also going to use my finger to kind of smooth everything over and let that dry really really well. 
Anytime you have a wet layer of material, you want to make sure that it dries completely so that there's no mold that comes if you put another layer on top of it before it's dry. Once that's done, I'm going to sand it all down before I do the next layer. The next layer is going to consist of the mixture that I've created along this process, which is the all-purpose joint compound that we just used mixed with PVA glue. I'm using Elmer School Glue, but you can use, um, I've heard other people use different types of white PVA glue. Uh, you just might have to play around with it, do some test bits before you actually put it on a finished piece, just to make sure if you're not using the same exact stuff that I'm using, that it still works for your project. I'm using a paintbrush to put on two coats of this making sure that I let it dry in between each coat and I have found as long as I get my brush into a cup of water um, it doesn't harden on the brush very quickly so I don't ruin a brush doing this. I'm making sure to get it on the juice box and inside the juice box as well because as it hardens it will strengthen that juice box material just a little bit more. I'm now going to be painting it in a very similar way I have the other furniture in the house. This is so they all look like they come from the same era and the same project and so I did a base coat of black and then a top coat of brown and I'm also going to do an off-white on top of the sink area and then I'm going to go back and dry brush a little bit with the sink color on top of the brown and I've done this on all of the furniture pieces I'm just trying to keep everything consistent so it all looks cohesive when everything's done and in the project to add a little bit of fun and whimsy to this piece, I am going to be adding a fabric cover to the front, kind of like a, like a curtain that you can pull apart. And I cut a piece of just chipboard, which is like cereal box material, to the right width and made sure that it fit right up inside the back of that archway opening. And now I'm going to be accordion gluing the fabric to this piece so that it looks like it's folded back drapes inside the sink cabinet. You can of course hem the edges if you would like to. I'm not going to hem mine because I kind of like the old like unraveling look. I have that a few different places in my project, but you can of course do that however you like. I'm adding some tacky glue to the top of the piece I just created. I'm not using hot glue because I think it will grab a little bit too quickly and if I don't get it in the right place, I may not like it. But I'm going to let that dry and then I can of course glue, I glued one side like it's open a little bit and that gives it just a little bit more interest and you might be able to put some little products inside. To create the faucet, I'm going to be using a Q-tip that I cut the sides off and I'm bending it so that it has an archway or a neck on the faucet. To go along with this piece to complete the faucet, I'm going to need two rectangles of cardstock paper and one little bead that will pass as a handle to turn the faucet on and off. I'm going to be painting the Q-tip stick with some gray, and I'm going to be also painting the rectangles, which are going to look like brackets holding the pipe in place. Basically, this is just supposed to look like a pipe that's coming out of the wall that's been bent over this sink basin as like a makeshift sink. So that's kind of what was in my head. I don't know if it's accurate, but we've got a fairy tale cottage going on, so. I think it's okay to take a few liberties here and there. I used the rectangles of paper to look like brackets that are holding the pipe to the back panel that I created. I added a little bit of silver paint on top of the gray to give it a metallic look. And now I'm gluing the bead to the front to look like a little handle where you can turn the water on and off. I don't have a hot and cold, but you could definitely add those in if you want a hot and cold option. 
I'll be honest, I was a little scared to cut into the plastic sink, so unfortunately I decided to use a black piece of paper that I used a hole punch to cut it out to create the sink drain. I kind of wish I had tried, at least tried to cut it because I think it looks a little bit fake, but that's what I ended up doing. I also used some glossy Mod Podge on top of the sink, not only to seal the paint, but also to give the sink a little bit of a porcelain look and then I went back with some watered down black paint to age it a little bit look like the sink has been used and it's old and then I added a little age to the bottom of the drapes and that's it for the sink for the cardboard house just very simple little sink but I think it's effective and works with the tone of our project so far so now we are going to get started on the little dog house. This is going to be the second project I'm making with a juice container. And I'm going to be using chipboard that comes from this food packaging. And you can use cereal boxes, anything that has this kind of flimsy cardboard material. I'm cutting this into half inch pieces, and this is what's going to become the siding and the shingles for the roof. I'm going to be cutting enough so that it will cover my entire juice box. And of course you can change these measurements if you have a larger box that you're wanting to create siding or a smaller one, and you, you can just kind of change the width to whatever you want it to be. Even though the juice box is basically already a house shape, there are a few adjustments I want to make that will make this project just easier to begin with. I want to make sure that I have a flat wall going up on both sides. So I'm going to cut out this little rectangular piece which is normally folded inside the juice box. I'm going to cut it out and then when I fold the top of the juice box back, I will glue it in place so I have a flat wall going up. So I'll show you how I fold it back in, but that rectangle stays flat and I will have something to add my siding to on the front of the juice box. I'm gonna do that for the front and the back of the juice box so I have solid panels on both sides. I know earlier with the sink I said I wouldn't suggest juice boxes for crafting in general just because of the material. Well, this did turn out to be pretty easy. So if you were going to make something with a juice box, I highly suggest the dog house. I think you could find better materials to make the sink out of. Both of them end up working in the end, but um, the dog house actually was pretty straightforward and fun and the shape and the fact that the shape is already like a house, like this was the most natural one to make. After I have the tabs at the top of the box closed back up again, I can go back and glue the flat panels or the triangular panels that we cut earlier back to the front. And then I can also make any adjustments with my X-Acto knife if I feel like the front panels are overlapping the sides at all. I'm also going to be cutting kind of a weird shaped door in the doghouse, especially because this house is going with the cardboard house. And if you don't know about the cardboard house, I will put a playlist in the description. I'll put a link to that so you can check it out from the beginning. But um, it has kind of weird shaped doors and windows. And so I wanted to make sure that the doghouse reflected the same as the cardboard house, kind of the weird fun angles. Now I'm adding the siding on. I'm leaving a gap between the panels. You can definitely overlap them if you want to, to look like um, normal siding, but I decided to just go ahead and leave a gap. And I think this gives it a little bit more of a homemade project uh, look. <laughs> it looks maybe more like a house that someone went out found some panels and just nailed them together for their pet outside to protect them from the weather. And uh, so I like that look. I also like the siding look, but I, I like this one as well. So that was kind of fun to play around with. I'm going to be doing the paneling all around on all four sides. I'm not paneling on the top where you see the two orange triangles with the juice logo. Those I'm leaving for the roof. 
I'm making sure to also go on the side with the door and then recut the opening so you can see into the doghouse. I'm cutting one of those half inch pieces that I cut earlier. I'm cutting it in half long ways. So I have quarter inch pieces and these are just going to trim the door. I think it's just a nice extra touch, not necessary, but it's one of those details that you can play with. You can make it all sorts of different shapes, whatever you want to match your cardboard house if you happen to be making this project along with me. So now that I have that done, Oh, I can drop it, of course. <laughs> After I have that done, I am going to focus on the roof. The roof is super easy. I am taking some of that same uh, food packaging chipboard, folding it in half, and then I'm going to start trimming it so that it fits on top of my piece. The top of the juice box actually has this kind of caved in roof look where it's very bendy and I really like that especially for this fairy tale thing that we're going for and so I don't mind the fact that the roof is not completely straight panels and it has a little bit of a curve to it. I actually really like that. Once I have the length and the width that I like for the roof, I'm just adding hot glue straight onto the juice box and then I am going to glue one side at a time, holding it down so that I know that my roof piece takes hold. When I worked on the original main body of the cardboard house, I asked whether you all thought I should do thatched roof or shingles. And a lot of people asked for shingles. And so even though I didn't end up doing shingles, I wanted to show them here an easy way to make shingles if that's what you wanna do for your project. I'm using one of those long strips of chipboard we made earlier and I'm cutting a line across it but not all the way through so that the piece holds together at the top and this is going to create the individual shingles and then I'm going back and trimming each corner to make whatever shape I want the shingles to be. Now we have one long strip that has several shingles on it. I'm going to put this up to my roof and start at the bottom of each side gluing on one strip at a time and then adding the next strip on top of it making sure to offset it so that the shingles don't all line up. Once that's done this is how it looks on both sides of the roof and then I'm adding just a little folded piece to go on top to finish the roof itself. Now I don't really think this step is necessary by adding the mixture. Adding all the individual pieces of chipboard really did reinforce this juice box. However, this will harden the material a little bit more, creating some more rigidity, especially if you are making something like this that um, children will be playing with. It's not a bad idea. Plus it continues to have the same texture as a lot of my cardboard house materials and builds. I'm using a sharp tool here to make it look like there are some nail holes in the boards. Again, trying to give it that very homemade look. I'm doing a base coat of black as I've done on many of the pieces because I do want dark, deep browns and natural tones. And so putting a base coat of black really helps with that. Plus it'll get into the cracks that we've created in between the boards. Once that's done, I'm going to be using the same brown I've been using on a lot of the house to make sure that it looks like this house is made from wood. And I will note that I painted the interior of this house black, but it does make it very, very dark inside. So you might want to think that through when you're painting, if you want it to be lighter inside or what the plan is. I'm painting the roof with gray because I have gray stones on the outside of the cardboard house and I want to continue to make them look like they go together. I'm using that gray to again dry brush on top of my paint job and give everything a little bit more of a weathering. I'm also using some felt that I had around. I wanted to make it a little bit more cushy inside of the doghouse, and so I added some felt to the inside bottom, which kind of covered up that it was a juice box, but also made it just look a little bit more finished. 
And of course, because this was turning out to be my favorite of the two builds, I just couldn't stop myself and kept wanting to add details. I'm using some of this scenery stuff um, that I have. You can find it at like train hobby stores. I'm putting a little bit of glue on the shingles and then adding some of this foliage. So it looks like these are very old shingles that have started to grow things underneath them. It's just a little thing, but I think it kind of helps go along with the fairy tale uh, cottage in the woods type thing that we're, that we're doing <laughs> overall, I guess. So here's the cardboard house. If you haven't seen it before, again, check out that playlist down below and you can see all of these things being made. I'm going to be adding the sink into the kitchen. I'm still going to play around with it a little bit to see what works best with the pot belly stove, but we really can't fit much else in this itty bitty uh, kitchen. But what, what more do you need than a sink and a stove? I think the curve of the stairs here is a perfect little place for this house. And I did look through my collection and I have this little dog and I was thinking maybe I could add wings to him and kind of paint him to look a little bit more like a fairy creature, a fairy dog. I don't know, we'll probably have to do that in a future video, maybe the same video where I work on the dragon, uh, maybe she has a some some story going on with the dragon but she also has a little fairy dog with fairy wings <laughs> i really hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed these two builds with the juice boxes uh i don't know we don't have much left in the cardboard house it is filling up so make sure to leave comments if you think there's anything that i'm forgetting and leaving out i love to read through them and get ideas and try out new things i hope you have an amazing week bye